and verse number 24. And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which the Lord cast out before the children of Israel. On Wednesday night, we talked about Sodomites in the land, and we looked at Sodomites in the Bible. And we looked at, at, uh, at that. Ten this morning, we're going to look at the agenda, the Sodomite agenda in America. Okay, And the, the first front of that agenda that should be addressed to understand that by the way, if you don't know what a sodomite is, that means a homosexual, okay? I don't like using that term homosexual because it's really not a biblical term, okay? Uh, sodomite is a biblical term, and we can understand that, so that's why I use that. Um, and I'm going to be very cautious with the language I use with this, but I want you to understand the truths here and what's really going on. And the first one we're going to talk about is Hollywood's sodomite agenda. We are going to talk about that uh, and, and look at that. The Sodomite agenda has strategically plotted their plans of attack in America. There's a war on all fronts. There's a war in the media, in Hollywood, in the media. There's, there's a war through the schools, through the government-instituted schools, or if you would rather, the government indoctrination centers. That's what they are. Okay, there's a war there. There's a war going on in the government itself to push and promote this. Um, obviously, Hollywood, and, and there's a war, there's a religious war that's going on. There's a religious front to this battle where main, many mainline churches, and I use that term with parentheses because I'm Baptist and I don't believe many of those are even churches, okay? So, so they're not New Testament churches. That'll make some people mad, but that's okay. Um, they're not New Testament churches, okay, according to what the scriptures say a church is to be. That's where we find our definition for church, not what the world wants, all right? Not what everybody else, well, that, this is called a church. Well, they may call themselves a church, but that doesn't mean that the Bible recognizes it as a church. Amen. Do you get that? That makes sense. We need to we need to go back to biblical terms and and, and make sure our definition of what 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 our words are, are coming from the scriptures themselves and not just pop culture and and the times and everything that we live in. Anyway, um, however, Satan is the author of this confusion and this war, and he masks himself in witchcraft and Hollywood and many other things. But make no mistake about it, there is a plan to indoctrinate people with the sodomite lifestyle. There was, an F, there was a plan, and it worked. And they've used it. And I'm going to show you what their plans were and how they worked by doing what I believe God has led me to do best, and that is to use their own words against them. And just take their own words, and then I guess the question will have to be asked to people that you know and others why in the world would we support Hollywood or anything else if they have this agenda in mind in the first place? You are being indoctrinated when you watch movies and Hollywood and television. You are being indoctrinated. It's not just passive entertainment, folks. It is indoctrination. That's what it is. It's Satan's main tool of indoctrination. Entertainment, amusement, media, those things. By the way, I don't hate sodomites. I want them to be saved. I want them to repent and believe the gospel. I want them to have the peace of God and peace with God. Just like I do drug addicts and any other sinner that's out there hooked on pornography or anything else, I want them to be free. I, I don't want them to be chained to their sin. Amen? I, I don't want them to be chained to the bond of iniquity. I want them to be free. Amen? But freedom is only found in repentance and faith in Christ. That's it. Otherwise, there's bondage. There's utter bondage. All right. Let's pray. Father, we need you, Lord. And, and uh, but I don't always like talking about dark things, but God's people need to be informed. They need to understand what's going on, what the agenda is, not only for their own family, but to help others, to help those that are stuck in sin, those that are allowing their children to view things, and those that are family members that are, are caught up with this, Lord, they're trapped in the bondage of sin. 
Help us, Lord, to understand this satanic agenda. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The first attack we see tonight, this this morning, is the is the media or TV. That's the first attack of this sodomite agenda, and it's the one that has such a broad reach. It reaches everywhere and everything. It's been a subtle attack at first, and then it intensified. The sodomite agenda started back in the 70s. They started showing cross-dressing men and got you to laugh at the sodomites on television. I can tell you when I was a kid, I remember, I, I mean... In the 80s, in the late 90s, or early 90s, I remember watching some of those old programs from the 70s. And they, had, they would have men that would dress up like women. And they would do that and, and, and put it in a light of humor so it would make you laugh. Now listen, I've seen churches do that too. I've seen churches have skits and plays and things like that where they dress up men as women. Well, that's wicked. Yeah. Why would you do that? That's for a laugh? It's ridiculous. But they, they, play, they painted them as silly little fellows that people laughed at, the effeminate little guys that were acting like that. It was part of a conditioning plan because Satan knew that he would slowly put things in the eyes of people and they would, over time, they would accept it. That's how it always works. Mine eye affecteth mine heart, the Bible says in Lamentations 3, 51. Mine eye affecteth my heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence. Keep it. Put a watch on it. Preserve it. Put a guard on your heart. Protect it with all diligence. We're out of it. So it's the issues of life. Hollywood has a sodomite agenda, and it's very clear. The homosexual advocacy on television first began to manifest itself in the 1970s. In 72, made for TV movie that was called That Certain Summer, featured Hal Holbrook and Martin Sheen as a sodomite couple. In 1973, the reality show An American Family featured son Lance Louds coming out. Billy Crystal played a, a gay character on the ABC sitcom Soap in the 1977. Despite the fact that the show consistently lost money, ABC put on that Soap show for four seasons. Why? Because they wanted you to be indoctrinated with homosexuality. That, that's, it, it didn't matter if they made money on it. They made money on other things. They wanted that agenda right in front of your face. Because they were shaping the youth. That's exactly what they were doing. This push towards normalizing homosexuality reached full torque in the later decades, coming to a head during the late 1990s. NBC sitcom Friends aired an episode with a lesbian wedding in 1996. The episode featured Newt Gingrich's sister as the official celebrity celebrating the wedding. Friends producers Marta Kaufman told Ben Shapiro for his book, Primetime Propaganda, this, and I quote, When we cast Candace, when we cast Candace, Gingrich, as the minister of that wedding, there is a bit of a in-your-face type comment, I'll put, in it that the right wing, against the right wing directly. What were they saying? They were thumbing their nose at the right wing, and they were making sure that you understood that we're doing this on purpose because you don't like the sodomite agenda. I can't use the word that they used, but that's what they were doing. Ellen, featuring a lesbian, Ellen DeGeneres, uh, created a stir when she came out on air. By the way, her show is one of the number one talk shows of the day today, and she is an active, known lesbian, and women, Christian women watch that show. They have to. Look at the demographics. There's no way they couldn't. Yeah. There's no, there's, there's no way that you could not, that the Christians aren't supporting that, because when you look at the numbers, they have to be. It's just impossible not to. But she's funny. Yeah, that's it. But she's funny, and that's what they use. They use laughter. Okay, and then uh, in Will and Grace, they featured a, a homosexual man and a straight woman rooming together. Why? Well, it's just normalizing. We're just Nothing's going on. I mean, nothing happens. It's just normalizing. Why? Wanting you to see that, put it in front of your eyes so it would normalize in your mind. That it's no big deal. See, there's a straight, there's a straight lady here, and there's a, a, a sodomite man here. It's, it's just normal. They just live together. They're normal. They don't, I mean, they don't have any interest in each other. But it's just, it's all normal. No, it's not normal. It's wicked. 
But that's, that's what's being shown. By the way, you can see that article at newsbusters.org uh, if you wanted to get some more information on that as far as setting up yourself. Today the airwaves are washed in pro-homosexual content. GLAAD tracks how often networks air homosexual characters on their shows. Fox's musical comedy Glee is one of the front lines of the homosexual advocacy, showing homosexuality and slamming anti-gay bullying. The goal is to make a victim. Why? What happens if you make a victim? Silly women feel sorry for them. Right? They kick in an instinct of silly women laden with their own sin that they, they feel sorry for them. Oh, don't pick on them. And then, well, and they did it with men too, by the way, but I'll show you how they did it with men in a few minutes here. They did the same thing with men to try to normalize it. Other popular shows prominently featuring homosexuals include Grey's Anatomy, Modern Family, Late Night with Conan O'Brien, host Conan O'Brien, even officiated a sodomite wedding in 2011. Using humor. If you laugh at it, you won't be offended by it. If you laugh at it, you won't be offended by it. If you laugh at it, you won't be offended by it. See? It's no wonder that Ben Shapiro declares in primetime propaganda that television is the culture's most ardent advocate for gay marriage. It's put in front of them all the time. If you watch it, it's put in front of you all the time. It's normalizing it. Hey, it's no big deal. Hey, these guys just want to get married. It's no big deal. By the way, they can't get married because marriage is of God and they don't like God. Amen. They hate God. So they, they couldn't. They couldn't get married anyway because it's not real marriage. Amen. Marriage isn't instituted by the state. It's instituted by God. Amen. Filmmakers have also not been shy about their support for, for gay marriage. I'm using that term gay marriage because that's what they're using in the article. Okay, I understand that word and what it means. I'm just using that for the article's sake. The 2005 film Brokeback Mountain which was nominated as an, at an Academy Award for Best Picture featured two cowboys in a sodomite relationship. Now you laugh, but I'm going to tell you something. That was used to give more influence on men, and it was an attack directly to get men to accept that. And it worked. It worked. Rugged and tough and not effeminate, and so guess what? So they turned it into that rough and tough type men. Why? They were going after a certain demograph and they were attacking. It was, it was a hit piece. They did it on purpose. It was a plan. Anyway, that's award for, it had an, award for, an Academy Award for Best Picture. Who watched that? Featured two cowboys in a gay... The 2008 film Milk told the story of Harvey Milk, the first openly gay man to be elected into public office in California. The Perfect Family, which mocks a devout Catholic as a bigot for opposing homosexuality, is Hollywood's most recent latest pro-homosexual effort. Hollywood actors and directors have not been shy about their goal to normalize it. Ryan Murphy, the creator of Glee, declared this, Hopefully I've made it possible for somebody on broadcast television to do a scene. And that's all I'm going to put. Okay, I'm not going to put anything else, but you understand what I mean. Okay? He wanted that to be open in front of everybody for your eyes to see. Why? Because if you see it, you can't get it out of your head, by the way. And then it becomes goes over and over and over and over in your head, and then you accept it. You say, but yeah, but, but I don't watch any television. That's good. You shouldn't. It's wicked. It's not worth it. There's nothing on there worth it. But the point is you have family members that are, and they're being indoctrinated with all of this. And they're being influenced all this. So when you come out and you say things, at least you can have an educated answer for them. Why don't you do this? Because of this, 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 and this. Listen to this series. That's why. And then tell me where it's wrong. And then tell me how you can watch that. Right? 
All right. Anyway, so that, that was his goal. Shapiro quotes then ABC executive Marcy Carsey, who helped produce the, the soap. I mentioned that soap was one of the favorite shows I ever put on the air. It dealt with homosexuality when nobody was. It dealt with all sorts of stuff that you could, just couldn't do with television, but we did and thought that that was a great thing to do. That's what I can't figure out is you've got churches that maybe they don't. I mean, why would they, you would partner up with Hollywood and go out to movie theaters and do all that? Why would you support any of these? What is there good to support about any of it? And you wonder why there's a slow acceptance of the, this. Has been a slow acceptance of this in America today, and it is being accepted, by the way. When you see it being voted on and, and, and some states voting in, it's being accepted. And it's being accepted on a religious side, too. It's no longer that taboo anymore. I'm just telling you, it's no longer that taboo anymore. It's not. Lonnie told me when he first got off the plane, he, he came from Texas, he said, I first got off the plane, he said, I looked over and there were two sodomite men kissing. He goes, this ain't Texas. He's from out in the middle of, from Paris, Texas, but I mean, so, not a lot. No, not from Austin. Austin, you see that all the time. That's, Austin's a weird place, but, what was that? Yeah, Austin's a weird place, yeah. Yeah, Brother Finney's up there trying to keep Austin weird, but, but, uh, <laughs> uh anyway. Um, in 2005, oh, by the way, here um, another another storyline they had was a recently was a 12 year old boy thinks he is gay and the babysitter tells him it's okay. See, trying to get you to accept that. See, it's okay. It's no big deal. You know. We, we think that, oh, this is totally like, come on, this couldn't happen. I mean, nobody's really, no, listen. Many folks before this, this kind of stuff was preached on watched television and watched some of those things just kept flipping through and watching those things. Or supported networks that were pushing this propaganda. You know, the, in, two, in 2005, that film, Brokeback Mountain, was one of Hollywood's biggest and boldest attempts to gain sympathy, if not outright support for those practicing the homosexual lifestyle. But it's not just an isolated effort. There is a well-planned propaganda campaign at work, a campaign laid out all the way back in the 1980s. The movie Brokeback Mountain looks like a big, bold, manly Western movie. But instead of the usual boy-meets-girl romance, it was cowboy-meets-cowboy. trying to normalize it. It's very propagandist because the entire purpose of the movie is to make homosexuality seem like something good and appealing and to make people who are opposed to homosexuality bigots and homophobes. You know, you just, you got to, see, you're going to, listen, Christian, you're the one that has the problem. Everybody in the world is accepting this. You're the one that has the problem. You guys are always in the way trying to stop progress. You're always trying to stop evolution. Right. You're always trying to stop man from evolving to that natural state, I guess, of sodomy. I don't know. But anyway, that's what some of these think. But but you're you're always trying to stop that. You're you're just always trying to you're always trying to get in the way of that. You and your Bible, you have to get in the way. See, that's what's coming. You're gonna be the one arrested for saying something about it. Yesterday, case in point, yesterday on the street, John was across the street, Brother John, a man that we preached with down there, and uh, he was across the street, and there was a, there was a sodomite man that was there, and, and the sodomite man was getting mad at him, and he spit on him. And John said, well, I'm recording this. And he goes, well, you can't record me. You shut that off. And he was getting mad and everything, and, and, uh, and, and, he, said that, and he said that John threatened him. Well, John said, told them, then the police show up. A few minutes later, the police show up, right? And, they, 
and the, yeah, and they 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 came by, and and uh, a couple of them came out and said, hey, listen, you know, you can't be threat, you know, we know you have the right to do this, and we're not trying to stop you or anything like that. But he said, you know, you 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 can't be threatening people, and if they and they always say that, it's like we don't threaten anybody. When have we ever threatened anybody? We've never threatened anybody ever. It's just uh, maybe the devil, <laughs> but uh, with the word of God, he's threatened by that. But I mean, we've never threatened. But you can't be threatening people, and you can't threatening people? What are you talking about? And you can't record people that don't want to, well, actually, that's not true. You can, because anywhere in the public domain is public domain. I mean, it is. I mean, you're, you're being recorded. You're be, when you're over in outside downtown Minneapolis, there's, there's cameras everywhere. We're always being recorded. So you can't say that you can't record, because you can. I mean, it's just, it's just ridiculous. But anyway, the point, the, the point is, is that John said, hey, if you want to see the tape, I can show you. What was mad? Well, that man was all flamed out. He was mad. Why? Because somebody preached against his sin. So it made him mad. So you're a bigot and a homophobe now. You're threatening people. He said, here, that, that, by the way, that book is called, the author of that book is The Marketing of Evil. There have been, there have been homosexual movies for years, but they are usually marketed to, to gay and art house audiences. But this was not the case with Brokeback. They are marketing a red state, bush country America. But the way the studio did that was by opening it up to just five blue states, cities, where there were large built-in gay audiences. Consequently, the first showings had blockbuster numbers. And they get these high numbers, and all the buzz keeps going. And then pretty soon, it's sort of like the Emperor's New Clothes effect. We're all looking at that. Even middle Christian America saying, everybody else says the movie is so great, I need to see it. To see why it's so great. Authors Alan Sears and Craig Oston in a book called The Homosexual Agenda warn about a complex and well-thought-out strategy, strategy to make America gay-friendly and hostile towards those that resist. These Christian authors quote extensively from After the Ball, a 1989 gay manifesto that laid out this agenda. Many gays deny such an agenda exists, but gay activist Tony Broadus, an executive director of Equality, California asserts there's no secret plan or ever been a public plan at this point. But the authors of After the Ball discuss in the book about 1988 summit of gay leaders in Warrington, Virginia, who came together to agree on the agenda. These authors are Marshall Kirk, a reportedly brilliant researcher into the brain. Guess that? He's a, what, what does that mean? Research? Well, he, he knows how to use advertisement to click with your brain. And, you know, I've talked to you about this, about Hollywood's uh, mind control programming. They, they go back and listen to that sermon, and that'll help you understand what I'm talking about. But that's, they know how to do that. And a Harvard-trained expert, Hunter Madsen, in public persuasion tactics. Do you get it? They hired scientists, witch doctors, to do what? <laughs> to play with your brain so you would accept the sodomite agenda. That's what they did. I mean, it, it, they admit it. Those are the men that they hired. Why would you hire somebody like that if that wasn't your goal? No, it was their goal. That's why they hired them. we got to make these people like this. The two men proposed using tactics on straight America that are remarkably similar to the brainwashing methods of male... Say, I always say his name wrong. Mayo, what's that? How do you say that guy's name? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, that devil. That one, yeah. Yeah, Mao Zedong, yeah. The communist Chinese, uh, man, the, the communist Chinese agenda, basically. Mixed with Madison Avenue's most persuasive selling techniques. <laughs> These devils are admitting to you they use mind control communistic techniques and propaganda to change your thinking about the sodomite agenda. About sodomy. Do you get, I mean, they're, they're admitting it. They hired people to do that. So knowing this now, you ought to think back in your mind, huh, the next time somebody gets mad at me because I don't want to watch their movies or their Disney and I don't let my kids watch them, I'm just going to take them to this and say, why don't you listen to the truth for once and know that you're being duped? You've been played for a fool. But you don't want to be that bold. Why? Because I don't want to make mom, dad, the mailman, sorry, um, <laughs> any, 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 anybody else, the mail lady, I'm just kidding, but anybody else mad at me, right? I don't want to make anybody mad at me. 
the dog catcher, I don't want him being mad either. I don't want grandma to get mad. Well, I want grandma to get mad, okay? I want her to. I want, I want her to look at the truth, and I want her to be mad at the devil for being tricked and duped. That's what I want her to do. And then I want her to repent and throw it all away and get right with God. That's what I, What's your goal? To rid Christian homes of that filth. That's my goal. Don't like it? Sorry, neither does the devil. But I ain't shutting up. It's been the number one persuasive tool to ruin Christians' homes. Right there. His purpose was brainwashing, persuasive telling te uh, selling techniques. According to Kirk and Hudson, it is to use the very process that made America hate us to turn their hatred into warm regard, whether they like it or not. These bunch of devils. First, they proposed homosexuals and their liberal allies should desensitize heterosexuals by getting homosexuality talked about as much as possible in the straight world. Evil, isn't it? The main thing, the author said, is talk about gayness until the issue becomes thoroughly tiresome. You can forget about trying to write up front, write up front to persuade folks that homosexuality is a good thing, but if you can get them to think it's just another thing, meriting no more than a shrug of the shoulders, then your battle for legal and social rights is virtually won. We'll just make you think it's just some other thing. Oh, that's just a choice. It's kind of like the, kind of like the genius propaganda of pro-choice. Genius. Absolutely, devilishly genius. Right? Got you to make it think that it's a choice. No, murder's not a choice. It never was from the beginning of time on. It's never been a choice. So call it what it is. Murder. Murder. Butchering killers. And the most savage kind, because even the women lose their natural affection to butcher the life that is inside of them. But hey, preacher, keep preaching puppy dogs and rainbows. It's working for you. Your building will get bigger. Your bank account will get bigger. You'll live a good life, and you can live in generalities, and nobody will be upset with you. And we're watching the whole world go to hell. And we're watching people that go into churches, that go to church every Sunday, and they're going to hell. And they're being fed a bunch of lies, and they're falling for them hook line, and sinker. And then because I tell the truth, I don't love anybody, and I'm mean, and I don't love people, and I'm just not very nice, and I need to be more loving. Really? How fun do you think it is to go downtown where there's a city crawling with sodomites, witches, evil, rotten people that hate you, and take this and go? I think we don't understand what love is. I think you use that word and you don't understand what it means. That's what I think. Love is action, not passive. And you know what? There's some people that need somebody to point their finger at them and tell them the truth and not pull any punches. Because they don't respond to punch pulling. Pulling punches, they don't respond to it. You know, there's a lot of games that people play out there, and they play it with their parents, they play it with others. You know why they can get away with it? Because they just won't be blunt with them. Well, you say you're saved, but you're, you're acting like a devil. <gasps> I think we need to have more compassion than that. Really? You mean just patty, just hold their hand while they're sinning? Help them out with it? You need to tell them that God loves you. No, God's angry with you. You better knock it off. If you are a child of God, you're getting ready to be taken out. 
You can't live like that forever. You can't, li- you can't live a child of God with no chastisement. God's going God's to deal with you. Who do you think you are thinking you can name the name of Christ and walk around and live in iniquity? Where did you get that from? I'll tell you where you got it from. That preacher that wanted to be compassionate with you. That's not compassion. That's not compassion. It's cowardice. Amen. It's absolute cowardice. Amen. Amen. You know what God wants? Some men to wake people up. Why? Because everyone is sleeping. But not the sodomite agenda. The devil's not sleeping. He's working. I don't want to hear about it, preacher. Just preach, preaching to me delicate, kind things. I don't want to hear any of this. Right. I don't want to hear any of this. This is hard things to hear. You bet it is. I don't like it either. I don't, I don't like preaching this. I don't like it. I'd rather not. But you know what I've noticed? Nobody is. They're not. They're not talking about it. They're not warning anybody. They're not showing your children the difference between right and wrong, between wicked and evil. They're playing patty cake with sin. They're not being straight with it. And sin kills. And it's killing. And I see it in my own family, and I'm watching people die from it. Watch them die from it. But you go on in your delusion, I guess. And remember, you get too far into that, it's an act of God. And He'll let you have your own delusion. The way you see America now is a delusion. That same flag you pledged to is the same one that you're going to be buried under. And it'll be them that do it. Says, he says, uh, let's see, he says, uh, uh, the show Will and Grace, uh, uh, let me back up, sorry, I went to the wrong page here. Uh, Sears said, we're talking about a demand for a behavior that not only wants to not be condemned, but to have every affirmation from every possible point that it, that it is correct. It's good and it's approved. They not only went for putting it in front of you, now they want you to approve it. They want you to be happy with it. They want you to like it. They want you to accept it. But soon they're going to want you to be a part of it. That's what they want for your children. Yeah, you should too, right? God loves everybody. You should just love them. You're preaching hate. No. No, we're not. Now look at the media over the last decade, the past decade. There was a tidal wave of gay themes. The Showtime hit, the L word, follows the lives of a group of lesbians. From shows like NBC's Will of Grace, ABC's Modern Family, the gay-themed shows have taken a prominent role in primetime. Desperate Housewives, The Office, even made time for the occasional gay guy subplot. Mine eye affected mine heart. Another point that Kirk and Madsen push is to portray gays as victims of circumstances and oppression, not as aggressive challengers. Oh, listen to me, friend. Listen to me very closely. You go down to that street, and you see how mad and angry. Go watch that five-minute video of a sodomite man trying to get around me to tell my son that he's recruiting gays. Watch the video. Watch the screaming. Watch the yelling, and he's the one screaming. Paul was preaching, but that guy was screaming. Why? Because he's aggressive and militant. But that's not how they're portraying it on TV. See how people's reality comes from a box and not from the what's really going on? See, we know because we're there watching it. We're out there watching the militancy. And all the Christians are acting effeminate and going to the closet. Oh, I can't say that. Don't preach against that. Oh, no, that'll make somebody mad. Yeah, but the sodomites are out there screaming. They're screaming. But you want me to go be passive and go back in the closet and say, no, go be quiet. 
go in there. Just be nice, be kind, be sweet. Prophesy unto us sweet things and lovely things and delicate things. See what I mean? But those guys are out there warring. Yeah, he said he's preaching the gay gospel, and he was preaching it. Man, was he preaching it loud. Gays must be portrayed as victims in need of protection so that straights will be inclined by reflex to assume the role of protector. Oh, I'm just, just, that is so repulsive to me. I mean, I, I, don't, I wouldn't hurt anybody because they're like, I mean, I wouldn't hurt anybody that's a sodomite just for the sake of hurting them. I mean, um, you know, that's wrong. You don't, you don't be violent towards people. You protect your family and everything else, but you don't be violent towards people. They need the gospel. They don't need you to beat them up. You know, that's we go out there to preach. We don't go out there to fight. Amen. We're there to Amen. preach the word of God. Right. And we're not there to fight anybody like that. Right. We're not there to spit on people like right. they did. Amen. We don't do that to people. We're ambassadors of Christ. Amen. Yeah. Benjamin Bull of the Alliance Defense Fund said this, Suddenly those who choose homosexual behavior, sodomy, are victims. It's crazy. But have homosexuals won on getting themselves seen as the persecuted minority? Turn to the movies, the wildly popular Saved movie portrays born-again Christians as cruel homophobes trying to reprogram poor, young, misunderstood gays in their midst. It's a movie called Saved. I watched a, a, a clip on CNN one time a couple years ago. I remember this. That kid Macaulay Culkin from, uh, he's not a kid anymore, he's my age, but, but, <laughs> but uh, um, and I'm old. So he, but he was on that show Home Alone, and he, he was in that movie, and he goes, yeah. And he was talking on CNN. Did anybody ever see that clip of this? He, it's unbelievable. The, the kid goes, he, the guy goes, he goes, yeah, I mean, like, there's these people out here, and they really believe this Bible and they, they like really believe that Jesus saves them. And they and this is not in the movie, this is like an, an interview. And they really believe that their lives are different and they and they gotta do this, and they gotta do that, or they gotta, you know, live by the Bible, or or they and they don't like certain, you know, homosexuals or whatever. And he's going to and he's acting like that that we're these strange aliens from another world, which I mean our home is not here. <laughs> Amen. We are from heaven. That's where our conversation is supposed to be. So guilty is charged if you want to leave me with that because you're right. I'm not part of your goofball crew, okay, and I don't want to be because I know where you're ending up. You're going to go to the pit of hell and burn for all of eternity. So you can call me weird or the Bible says peculiar if you really know the truth of it. Let me set you straight, kid. And, uh, and, and so you understand one thing. That's, that is the truth of it. But see, they were trying to portray Christians as these just, I mean, Totally strange people that actually believe in this, that Jesus is coming one day. And, and I mean, they're, they're just, they're really weird people. Well, I mean, <laughs> I, we might be a little different, but I'll tell you what, at least I didn't hang out at Michael Jackson's house. Enough said. Amen? I'm going to talk about weird. I wouldn't point a finger if I was the one hanging out with Michael Jackson and his bubble, his monkey bubbles. All right? Think about it. <laughs> some of you will get that, some of you won't. <laughs> Trembling before God is about how orthodox and hesitant homosexuals are persecuted, not accepted. The conspiracy of silence argues that some gay priests are hounded to death because they cannot act out their homosexuality. Oh, no, they are. They're raping kids. That's what they do. Amen. That's what they do. Let's be honest. That's what they do. They do it all the time. They've been doing it for years. Rome has been a, 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 a safe haven for sodomy. And the good, kind, understanding homosexual next door has been seen in so many movies and TV series, series that he's, he's become somewhat of a clique, a cliche, I mean. In every movie, there's all, or they, they show this guy that's a nice sodomite next door that's a nice guy. He wouldn't hurt anybody. Everybody goes to advice for him and from him and everything. These days, roughly 30 regular homosexual characters are being beamed into your home by the major networks every year. As Kirk and Madsen put it, the average American watches over seven hours of TV daily. Seven. 
seven hours of TV daily. And you wonder why. And you wonder why professing Christians know nothing about the Bible. Nothing. Because they spend their days meditating on filth. That's why they know nothing. Those hours open up a gateway into the private world of straits through which a Trojan horse might be passed. They're admitting it. We're using that as a gate right into your home. And we're beaming in what we want you to learn. Don't you get it? Even the news is like that. If you're not careful the news, I'll give you a perfect example. The news shows will run stories like about this, about this sodomite football player, right? Or they'll run stories about nothing like some movie star is cheating on somebody else or something. Well, who cares? You blast that out of the news all the time and that's what you show? Why? Well, because something else is going on they don't want you to know about. That's the first reason why. So, so Because there's a lot of wicked things going on, but they don't cover it. They look the other way. It's to get you caught up in some stupid soap opera. That's what the news is now. It's like a soap opera. To get you concentrated on this while they're doing this over here. That's, that's what that is. Don't be fooled by that. It's just it's a bunch of propaganda is all this. Right now the big propaganda is that, that all these girls were kidnapped and taken over. And I, I believe it and I feel sorry for them that Muslims did that. I mean, I, or, you know, this group. Who knows? They probably work for the CIA anyway. But anyway, there's a, there's a group that took these girls in, in Nigeria and they took them over. Hey, I'm not happy about that. I pray they get released. But you want to know something else? We've been killing girls and boys and people all over the world. And we do it every day. And how about let's start in our own backyard and say the 40 million babies that we've slaughtered. You really care about girls? Quit your hypocritical lying. It's a big lie. You don't care nothing about those girls. You're trying to use it for your own advantage. That's what that is. Exactly. Yeah, bring those back. We can't bring back those babies your husband allowed slaughtered, Michelle. Oprah Winfrey, who influence, influences millions, promoting, promoted homosexuality when she made a cameo appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show, uh, com coming out episode. Since Oprah claims to be a Christian when in fact she is a New Ager, she has duped God only knows, the Lord only knows how many people, biblically un uninformed Christians on the issue. I don't think they're probably Christians, but anyway, they've been fooled. Television shows that promote homosexuality are too numerous to list. I mean, Pretty Little Liars, Glee, Degrassi, all these, that glad for their promotion of the homosexual lifestyles, that there's an association, organization that promotes this. Wise parents will protect their children. Yeah, they protect themselves too and not watch it. This guy, this article, limits that. No, why are you watching it? You don't need to see homosexuals run around either. Why would you watch it? Why is it okay for you to watch? They say this, famous historical figures are especially useful to show to us for two reasons. First, they are invariable de invariably dead as a doornail, hence in no position to deny the truth and sue for libel. Second, and more serious, the virtues and accomplishments that make these historic gay figures admirable cannot be gainsayed or dismayed by the public. Since high school history textbooks have already set them in incontrovertible cement by casting its violet spotlight on such revered heroes, in no time a skillful media campaign could have the gay community looking like the veritable fairy godmother to Western civilization. That's these two men that put this on, Mark Marshall Kirk and Hunter Madsen. But you know, the attack gets narrowed down to children here through media, and adults, and men, the X-Men, Marvel Comics, X-Men movies. The gay X-Men screenwriter Dan Harris, who wrote the screenplay for X X2 with gay screenwriter Michael Doherty, admitted that he sees X-Men mutancy and the X-Men struggle for acceptance in society as corresponding to homosexuality. He said, we, we, put, this, we put this series... We, we, we put this in your mind so you'd watch this, so you would see this. So it would formulate in your mind. It's because more a metaphor, it's become more of a metaphor for sexual identity and orientation because it's more appropriate to look at a person and have to say, are you a mutant? You can't always look at a person and know that they are a mutant, just like you can't look at a person and know that they are a homosexual. 
Openly Gay X-Men director Brian Singer has not only directed most of the X-Men movies, but recruited openly gay activist actor Ian McKellen to star as Magneto by convincing him that mutants were com comparable to struggling gays. So he hired a sodomite actor to say, hey, listen, man, that you're just like this mutant. You're the same way. McKellen stated, I think he expected that I was going to consider it a non-posh enough job, but revealed that he was told that X-Men is really about the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. I thought he was right, says McKellen. It's just not a fantasy story. It's a parable. McKellen is a co-founder of the LGBT gay activist group Stoneware. Stonewall, excuse me. Um, homosexual William Ernest in his article Making Gay Sense of X-Men admitted Singer and his screenwriter equipped X-Men and X2 with the rhetorical stealth needed to fly below the gaydar of many critics and audience members. He said we get it just down enough to where they don't, most mainstream won't know it and they'll take their kids to it and they'll all watch it. See, this is called un uncovering a plot. That's what this is. This is exposing it and uncovering it to show you exactly what's really going on. In the latest X-Men installment, when an X-Men who works for the U.S. military is asked how he got away with being discovered through the years, he replies, well, they didn't ask, and I didn't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Do you get, the innu do you, do you get what he just stuck into your mind? Folks, these people aren't stupid. They know what they're doing. They're very calculated what they're doing. It's just Christians don't know what they're doing. Because you're busy about your life, and you don't know what's going on and you don't research any for the most part. Many people don't. Thus the line is drawn from this X-Men superpower to homosexuality and Hollywood has gone a step further than simply legitimizing what billions of people deem to be sinful and destructive behavior to glorifying it as something to be coveted like a power. It's a cool superpower. We're almost done here. Um, Johnny Depp. Ever heard of him? Yeah. He admits that he read the book Sodomy and the Pirate Tradition to prepare for his starring role as Captain Jack Sparrow. Isn't that nice? Famous film reviewer Robert Ebert wrote, Depp seems to be channeling a drunken drag queen with his eyeliner and the way he minces ashore and slurs his dialogue even so, I don't know what that word is, in so... so Seeantly, whatever that means. When Rolling Stone asked Depp about the certain gay undercurrent, so obvious in his Jack Sparrow character, Depp responded, Well, there was a great book I read, Sodomy and the Pirate Tradition. How could that be a great book? How sick and evil is your mind to think, Well, there's a great book I read. Yeah, I just kept my casual reading. A very interesting book I wasn't exactly going for for that with the character, and Keith Richards is not flamboyant in his actions. Keith is pretty stealth. But with Jack, it was more that I liked the idea of being ambiguous, of taking his character and making everything a little bit questionable, because women were thought to be bad luck on ships, and these pirates would go out for years at a time. So you know there's a possibility that one thing might lead to another. You're lonely, and you have an extra ration of rum. Cabin boy. See what he's saying? He's talking about children, boys. I know, but I'm bad for saying it. That's go to Mc, go to Mc, I don't go to McDonald's because I don't eat that food anymore. But if you went to McDonald's and you went over to McDonald's, you would see or one of those restaurants, you would see those Pirates of the Caribbean. All look up to Jack Sparrow, and all the time, what are they doing? Indoctrinating. To start in the most obvious place as a business, Disney has long held a progressive attitude towards the LGBT people. Gay pride events have been hosted at Disney since 1991, and the company started over its gay employees' health insurance benefits for their partners since 1995, a decision that was, wasn't entirely popular back then. People didn't like it at all. By the way, that's right. Uh, don't forget that 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 um, that X Men director, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Singer is being accused of raping teenage boys along with other powerful moguls in in Hollywood right now. You've never heard of this, have you? 
no, this is huge news, but you know what? They're masking it and covering it up and nobody's talking about it. But that Hollywood sodomite curtain is being exposed right there. And this X-Men director that was talking about this, he's the one that was, he was involved with this. With young men coming forward and saying that this has happened to them as they were acting or whatever. Hollywood has a sodomite curtain. It's real. But hey, it's just entertainment. Go ahead and have your fun. It's okay to support devils, right? And then you've got to shy away when your family gets mad at you because you don't want to watch a movie or you don't do this, you know that. Why? No, why not just tell them? It's evil. It's evil. Well, that's your opinion. No, it's not my opinion. It's God's, it's God's word, and it's evil. And it's absolutely disgusting and evil. Why would you want to support it anyway? One of the most poignant examples of the company's tolerant atmosphere in the case of uh, Lyricus, the, the lyricist, excuse me, Howard Ashman, who was openly gay and died of AIDS in 1991. Not only did Ashman write songs for The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, huh, I wonder what that means, Aladdin, he was also closely involved in those films' productions, casting actors and holding story meetings with animators. At the end of Beauty and the Beast, Disney acknowledged his contributions with the tribute to our friend Howard Ashman, who gave a mermaid her voice and a beast his soul. He will for, we will forever be grateful. Oh, preacher, you're just too bold. Really? They just put it in the movie. I think they're bolder than we are. And maybe you don't want to hear this, but I'm sorry. This is what you need to hear. You need to understand, unless you plan on being an island of yourself. If you only plan on living for you and let the world go to hell, and let my family go to hell, let my friends go to hell, let everybody go to hell, then yeah, you don't need to hear any of this. Just ignore it, if that's your plan. But if you, if you plan, what's that? Yeah, then you'd be Amish. If you want to go be an isolationist and go live in the Amish land and not confront evil and wickedness and not reprove the wicked works of darkness, go ahead. But you're disobeying one of those commands then. You're only obeying part of the command. I know it's not fun to hear. I know it. I understand it. I get it. You think it's not fun to hear? It's, even, it's, it's, it's less fun to study. Even classic Disney films featured archetypes initially mocked by his peers. Dumbo and waves his freak flag after hallucinating pink elephants and learning to fly. Pinocchio reflects the anxiety since he doesn't know how to act like a real boy and, think, and he thinks performing masculinity through smoking, cursing, and be, misbehaving will earn his father's love. You just don't get the psychology and the witchcraft these people use. That's, that's exactly what they're doing. Then there's the fact that Disney protagonists often reject traditional marriage partners. How about this? Always through their films. Remember, those are protagonists and antagonists. You have to go back and listen to the sermons if you don't understand what that means. But the main character of the show, okay? Um, Ariel wants to marry a human against her father's wishes. Belle rejects Gaston's proposal in front of the whole town. Jasmine refuses to marry the Sultan's suitors. Pocahontas refuses to marry a tribal warrior. Mulan rejects conventional matchmaking in this way, even though Disney films usually offer a traditional happy ending with a heterosexual marriage. The journey always involves rejecting parental and societal ex expectations and exercising a freedom to marry whomever you love. S spirit, that is among the gay rights activists. In other, in other instances of gender bending, the genie in Aladdin shapeshifts into many characters, including female ones and even dons fe feminine clothes and undergarments at different points in the film. Indeed, Aladdin's romance with Jasmine is, is much less developed than his relationship with the genie, and his decision to free that genie provides the movie's poignant climax. Robin Williams' character even acknowledges Acknowledges the sodomite undercurrent. I'm getting kind of fond of you, kid. Not that I want to pick out curtains or anything. See? That's why I hate Disney. They're wicked as hell. I hate them. I don't mean I hate people. I hate the production, what they're doing. Another obvious example, Mulan, where the protagonist disguises herself as a male soldier when the soldiers later dress themselves as courtesans so they can sneak into the palace. The film completes its theme of gender as performance with women pretending to be men and men pretending to be women. 
Mulan's I Want song also plays like an anthem for kids born into the wrong gender body. When, when will my reflection show who I am inside? And intriguingly, the film insinuates that her male captain fell in love with her while she was a masquerading as a man. You get it? She was dressed up like a man, and they had that guy fall in love with her before she came out as a woman. That's, that's what they're doing. Obviously, then you have Disney's Gay Days and other, everything else. But understand this. There is a, a sodomite attack from Hollywood. It's there, and it's real, and it's evident, and it's on every front in Hollywood, whether it's TV, whether it's movies, whether it's the theater itself whether it's plays in theater. That's some of the first sodomites ever were regular plays on Broadway and plays like that. They're swarming with them. Yeah, ballet and everything else. That's, that, that's the agenda. So now you have it and it's exposed. You can see it. Now go tell somebody else. Give them a CD. We'll make one up for them and give it to them. Tell them the truth about it. We'll make up the whole series for them and give it to them if they'll listen to it. Free. We don't charge anything. We'll give it to you. We want you to have it. By the way, if I had family members that didn't like my stand on Hollywood, I know what I'd be giving them. I'd be giving them an entire CD set. All you got to do is ask. We'll, we'll give them to you. Amen? Amen. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, that'd be something, wouldn't it? That I don't believe in, but here you go. <laughs> anyway, Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for the, for the power in it, Lord. And Father, we're, you, you've commanded us to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Lord, we did. We dragged it all into the light today and showed that sodomite agenda in Hollywood. Lord, that it's real. It's, it's deeper than that. It goes way deeper. I don't want to cover everything on it, Lord. But it's wicked. It's vile. And people are being programmed through it and following it. Help us, Lord. Help us to be light in a dark world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.